Long before Victor opened the Maharaja, before Jasper discovered a labyrinth, before Nellie G became a fashion icon, and Annabelle became the spark of the resistance, vampires crawled along the streets, hills, and valleys of Los Angeles. Hello, 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 and welcome back to Masquerade Monday. If you subscribe to me for my LA by Night videos, then this video might be something you can sink your fangs into. We know so much about Los Angeles of the world of darkness and modern nights, but I thought it would be fun to take a deep dive into the city and how vampires have influenced it. With that in mind, this series will be separated into pre-revolt, revolt, bloodlines, and modern nights. Now a quick disclaimer before we begin. Firstly, not just vampires are in Los Angeles. In fact, they were one of the last monsters in the world of darkness to arrive in the area. And although their histories have affected the development of the city, we are just going to be focusing on kindred activity for this video. Secondly, as some of you may know, I don't discuss kindred of the East on this channel, which would be the Wan Kuei or Kuei Jin to those of you more familiar with the Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines game. But they are entangled in a lot of the 20th century history of LA, so I will do my best to briefly cover them when relevant. Now with that out of the way, let's dive in. On Christmas Day 1828, an American brig called Danube, sailing from Boston, wrecked in San Pedro Bay during a terrible storm. The locals of the area tried to rescue as many of the crew, passengers, and cargo as they could, including a long, coffin-shaped box. The box's owner was a man named Jack Turpin, who was taken in by a landowner named Don Sebastian Juan Dominguez. Unbeknownst to the charitable Don Sebastian, the box held the body of Christopher Houghton, a 200-year-old Toreador elder embraced at the tender age of 13. Christopher Houghton, being of Toreador blood, sought to attach himself to any art movement and was successful even though he possessed no artistic talent. Brought by his sire to the New World at some point in the 1700s, they resided together in Boston through the American Revolution. In the early 1800s, his sire grew tired of Christopher's leeching of the art world and gave him a challenge create a grand work of art in any medium to show the other Toreador of the city. Christopher took the challenge and created his painting, The Gates of Heaven, in less than a year. With almost the entire Toreador clan of New England watching, Christopher premiered his work. After a moment of silence, he was greeted with a room full of laughter, as Christopher was seen for what he truly was, a poseur, and nothing more. Being severely disrespected and his reputation nearly destroyed, his sire disowned Christopher and subsequently, Christopher fled Boston in a rage. Disgusted with both the old and the new world, Christopher decided to relocate to China and he gave his ghoul, Jack Turpin, the task of getting him there. Upon arising from his sleep and finding his plans frustrated once again, Christopher completely lost control and frenzied. He killed his ghoul retainer who had followed him into exile and slaughtered the entire Dominguez family with the exception of Don Sebastian, who fled and hid in a chicken coop. When Christopher eventually gained control again, he hunted down Don Sebastian and made him his new ghoul and made Don Sebastian's home his new haven. Once fully recovered and fully acclimated to the new environment, Christopher Houghton decided that he was going to show those East Coast decadents the way a city should be run, and would turn this sleepy little village into a new Carthage. Now, although some of you may recognize the relevance of this ancient city to vampires, I haven't yet covered it on this channel, so I will briefly discuss why this idea is grandiose at best. In the World of Darkness, Carthaginian society was dominated by the vampire clan Bruja, who came closer to achieving their idealistic goals than at any other time before or since, because supposedly it was a culture where kindred and kind were very close to one another, so much so that some Bruja and a few others remember Carthage as the third city, the spiritual and political heir of the first and second cities, the ancient cities controlled and ruled by Cain and his progeny. For the first time in his unlife, Christopher found himself without any parental figure, without anyone to tell him what to do. Unsurprisingly then, Christopher went wild. For the next 35 years, he indulged himself in every debauchery and vice he could find or invent. Anything and everything his straight-laced master would never have allowed. Don Sebastian's rancho became an abattoir, ruled by a golden-haired, wild-eyed monster drunk with freedom and power. 
He lived there with just Don Sebastian until 1853, when he discovered and embraced a man named Joaquin Murrieta. From that point on, Joaquin was always at his side, transferring his fanatical hatred of mankind to his sire's enemies. With the United States acquisition of California in 1847 and the subsequent gold rush starting in 1848, settlers flocked to Los Angeles at a rapid pace. As vampires and mortals began to flood the city, LA developed the reputation for being one of the most debauched towns in America, attracting thieves, murderers, and degenerates of every kind. Homicides skyrocketed, and Los Angeles had more gambling dens, saloons, and brothels per capita than anywhere else in the country. Country, with very little law enforcement to be found anywhere. Things suddenly changed for Christopher and Los Angeles in 1870. One night, the realization struck that he was wasting his own life and dissipating his resources. Christopher had lost his dream of the new Carthage in an orgy of blood, and so he rededicated himself to build a city that would attract the kind of vampires to make his city a mecca for artists of every kind. Christopher began to change, and with him, so did Los Angeles. If Los Angeles was going to become everything Christopher wanted, it needed more people to support new vampires. Just 5,000 people lived there in 1870, and only the city's huge mortality rate had allowed Joaquin and Christopher to hide their depredations. Christopher also resolved that until he was completely ready, no one would know who the true master of Los Angeles was. His humiliation at the hands of the Boston Toreador 40 years earlier still burned in him, and he refused to put himself in that situation again. Don Sebastian, who still maintained considerable power in California, would become his frontman and govern the city as his regent. On December 25, 1870, 42 years to the day after he landed, Christopher granted Don Sebastian immortality and crowned him Prince of Los Angeles. Christopher's plan worked. In 1880, Los Angeles had a population of 11,000. In 1900, the population was 100,000. And by 1912, it was 300,000. And when the city filled up, speculators and developers laid out huge new communities. And as Los Angeles grew, a steady stream of kindred began to flow into the city. Originally, these were refugees from the better established kindred community in San Francisco, due to the increased pressure between the the Bruja, Anarchs, and the Ventru. But in Don Sebastian, they found a stern but fair prince, one who did not care what anyone had done elsewhere, as long as they all obeyed his rule while they were in his domain. All this time, Christopher had been searching for his métier, the art form that would allow him to give expression to the creative fires burning within him. In 1909, however, Christopher found his muse. He saw his first motion picture and it entranced him. This would be his gift to the world, and through this new medium, Christopher planned to unleash his full brilliance to the entire Camarilla. By dominating the directors who came to the West Coast to do location shooting, Christopher convinced a number of them to stay and set up studios in Hollywood. By funneling money to their fledgling operations, Christopher set up a studio system that broke away from the bosses in New York who were, at the time, running the infant movie business. For the first 30 years of the industry, Christopher managed every facet of motion picture production, from choosing the actors to approving the scripts and final edits. He attracted talent to Los Angeles and, through ethical or unethical means, kept it there. In the next video, we'll discuss the beginnings of the Anarch Revolt of the 1940s, an important event that would shape the Los Angeles we see in LA by night. I make videos multiple times a week, so if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.